everyone, I'm Farah, and I head the sunscreen committee at the Personal Care Products Council. Did you know that 90% of skin aging is actually caused by sunlight? What you think is just natural skin aging is actually caused by good old daily sun exposure. So by practicing safe sun every day, we can ward off wrinkles, age spots, dehydrated and sagging skin, and reduce our risk of developing skin cancer. So get ready, in today's episode of Skin Smart, we're going to show you how to keep your skin looking healthy and looking young for years to come. Of course, I have with me two prominent dermatologists to help us understand how the sun's rays can damage our skin and more importantly, what we can do to help prevent and reverse the signs of sun damage. First, we have Dr. Elizabeth Hale. Dr. Hale is a board certified dermatologist and clinical associate professor of dermatology at NYU School of Medicine and vice president of the Skin Cancer Foundation. Welcome, Liz. And our second guest dermatologist, Dr. Howard Brooks, is from Washington, D.C. Dr. Brooks is a board-certified dermatologist and an associate professor at Howard University College of Medicine. Howard, welcome to the show. Now, as we get started, I want to warn everyone. The image I'm about to show you is quite shocking. It's a photograph of a 69-year-old truck driver who spent over 30 years with the left side of his face exposed to the sun. You can really see the difference between the two sides of his face. On the left side, you see a lot of skin damage, whereas on the right side of his face, you could see it's far less wrinkled. He literally looks 20 years younger, but it's the same face, so it's quite shocking. You bring up some very good points. First of all, as you mentioned, we know that about 90% of skin cancers are associated with exposure to UV rays, but also 90% of aging of the skin is also caused by overexposure to ultraviolet radiation. I think Liz brought up some good points. You do have to limit yourself and limit the sun exposure that you have, but also we make sure that you wear some protective clothing, wear sunscreen. And this is another thing, a lot of people of color don't think they need to wear sunscreen, but it's very important that they do. Mm -hmm, absolutely. People don't realize ultraviolet A or UVA rays penetrate every single day. It doesn't need to be sunny. Mm -hmm. It's not about going to the beach. Those UVA rays can penetrate through windows in a truck, through your office windows on a cloudy day. 80% of UVA rays reach the Earth's surface, and those rays are constantly aging the skin. I do want to talk a little bit, though, about sunburns and how sunburns are different than other types of burns that you would get by, say, accidentally touching the stove. Well, I think the easiest explanation is a sunburn can lead to skin cancer. Sunburns are a result of UVA damage and UVB damage, and that directly uh, damages the DNA in the skin. And I think also, you know, sunburns directly cause skin cancer. And what's also important is that when you get a burn on a stove that's often accidental, unintentional, sunburns are preventable. And that's really the important message here is that we really need to protect our skin from sunburns. According to the Skin Cancer Foundation, even having one blistering sunburn can double your chance for getting melanoma. Now, I know melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer, but I'd like to talk a little bit more about the other forms of skin cancer as well. Yeah, you know, there's basal cell cancer, which is the most common. It's usually caused by sun damage, both UVA as well as UVB, as well as uh, squamous cell cancer. What's interesting is melanoma accounts for only about 4% of new cases of skin cancer each year in the United States, but it also is responsible for about 75% of skin cancer-related deaths. So that tells us it is the most serious type, but the basal cell and the squamous cell carcinoma are much more common. We see them every day in our practices, and those are the ones that are largely preventable by avoiding chronic exposure to UV radiation. So people really should protect their skin every day. It's not just enough to protect yourself from getting that sunburn at the beach. You know, I wanted to learn more about skin cancer and skin aging and really get a close-up look. So the other day, I dropped by Dr. Tina Ulster's office in Washington, D.C. Here's a little peek into my visit. Thank you for having us here, Tina. Well, thank you for being here, Fair. It's really nice to have you in my fair city. Now, I know there have been a lot of advancements in the area of skin cancer detection over the past several years, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Well, the biggest advancement has been this device called Melifind, which has really revolutionized the way the dermatologists that have that device in their office practice medicine. We usually do a full skin exam. We identify um, those abnormal moles or marks that we may want to either biopsy or take out completely. And with the Melifind, which is totally non-invasive, it will tell you with over 90% certainty whether or not that lesion needs to come out. 
Speaking of skin cancer detection, how often should patients come in for a skin exam? Well, if somebody does not have a personal or family history of a skin cancer, once a year is fine. And I think that the best way to remember it, I know for myself, is just after the beginning of every year, so the first of the year I think about it, but other people do it by their birthday. And so when, if they turn the clock uh, one more year, they think, oh, I've got to see my dermatologist and do my full skin check again. Now, Tina, I know that you prescribe treatments for skin cancer prevention and premature skin aging, and I'm wondering, where does sunscreen fit in in all of that? Well, sunscreens are not only important for protecting our skin from the sun, but um, when I mention sunscreens to people in general, it raises their awareness about other things that they can put on their skin to better enhance their skin. Um, so I actually don't let anybody leave my office, whether it's a child, a woman, a man, even a teen, which we know are very difficult to treat without a bottle of sunscreen. You know, it was such an eye-opening experience to be in Tina's office and really see firsthand what these skin cancer lesions look like. You bring up such an important point, though, because skin cancer is very unique because you can actually see signs of it on the skin, which gives us the opportunity to diagnose these at an earlier stage and when they're still curable. And so really it's important to go in and see a dermatologist at least once a year to get checked because we really need to educate people about what to look for. Now you talk, mentioned about sun damage and people are so concerned about age spots and wrinkles and we know that the cumulative damage from UVA can cause this and the easiest way to do it is to prevent it. There are things out there that have improved our ability to find skin cancers and to treat skin cancers as well as new procedures and evolving procedures to reduce and diminish the signs of skin aging but nothing compares to protection. You know, what really worries me is the misinformation um, that's out there that's making people hesitate in terms of using sunscreen. So um, I was wondering if we could talk a little bit about retinol palmitate or vitamin A and some other things that we hear about pertaining to sunscreens. I want to sort of clarify those things. You know, there's been a lot of talk and patients ask me all the time. We see that SPFs and we see the sunscreens with vitamin A in it. Vitamin A, the studies show that vitamin A is in such a small amount that it's really there for cosmetic purposes. It's not going to um, increase your risk of skin cancer. It's not going to make you more more sensitive to the sun in the sunscreens. In fact, what's interesting is that I think there's some anti-cancer effects that, right. uh, that uh, vitamin A can have. So I'm glad that we cleared that up because that should not dissuade anyone from using sunscreen on themselves or their, or their children. And just to mention the other ingredient, oxybenzone, that's talked about a lot. There have been some great studies by both the American Academy of Dermatology and the Photobiology Committee at the Skin Cancer Foundation, and both retinal palmitate mm. and oxybenzone have been shown to be completely safe when in human use. Sometimes you'll have a patient who just absolutely does not want to apply a chemical to their skin, and that's the time when I bring up zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, and there's been some discussion about whether or not it's safe to use these nanoparticles or these micronized particles, and all of these ingredients that were brought under question are shown to be safe and effective. And once again, folks, I really wish we could keep going, but we're out of time. I really want to thank my guests and our studio audience, and for more information on protecting your skin, please visit these sites.